Hey, my name is Addie and welcome to The Pulse. Be sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment below letting us know what you'd like to see next. So here we are in the control room, which is the sort of hub of everything, really. And um, it's a labor of love. It's obviously an ongoing process. Um, but this is where I will control any tracking that's taking place next door. But also, more to the point, this is where I'll do all my editing and then mixing uh, for any projects that I'm working on. So um, just to briefly talk through it all, I have an iMac that's kind of running as the center of my system. And that's running through Universal Audio Apollo X8P, I've also got the satellite and I've got quad down there as well. So I've got a lot of functionality for my ins and outs. Basically, generally speaking, I tend to run uh, more analog and outboard kind of toys on the way in. But for most mixing, I'm mixing in the box pop from the very end, which we'll talk about in just a second. But so for tracking, I have a Kemper there, Kemper amp modeler for guitars. Um, over here, I have a Sans amp RBI uh, for bass. Um, obviously, we'll also use amps next door as required, but that gives me two basic things for guitar and bass, which is great. Preamps, I've got um, some UAD uh, tube, the 4710D over there, which I love. I've got the 6176 over there. I've got a warm audio 273 EQ, um, and I've got an ART voice channel pro, uh, and a massive patch bay, which makes me very excited. Uh, so that um, I've got everything laid out in patch bay, so in theory, I can plug anything into anything, and that makes me feel powerful and in control. Um, so yeah, so generally speaking with the size of the live room, um, if I'm tracking a band, let's say we will tend to do it one by one. So let's say we'd have a drummer next door with all the mics set up on the kit, but we'd have a guitar player playing guide guitar through the Kemper in here, and then later we'll go back and retract the guitar. But it works, it all goes into, I use Logic, so it's all into Logic up here. And then afterwards I can do my editing as required. Um, you know, uh, of course, as every uh, producer, sound engineer knows, you just want to try and get the best audio you can at every stage of the process. So I'll do a fair amount of work, a little bit of compression EQ, that kind of thing on the preamps, getting stuff in so it's nice when it's in, and then I can play with it in there. Um, uh, and of course, eventually you get to the mixing part of it, which is the most important part, arguably. Um, and mixing is a... A lifetime endeavor, shall we say, and because you're never going to you're never going to win. <laughs> I think is what I've learned. You might you, you'll get close, uh, and hopefully every time you do it, you get slightly better. But you know it's about sound, so the most important thing is how things sound. Um, I've done a fair amount of sonic treatment in here. I suspect that I'm probably going to do more at some point because um, there's still some frequency ranges that I'm a little unsure about. But um, you know, essentially, there's two approaches to listening while you're mixing, and the first is to listen on speakers and the second is to listen on headphones. Um, for the speakers, my main absolute workhorse speakers that I mix everything on are my Neumann KH310As, um, which I love. They just have an enormously um, steady frequency response in my experience. There's a lot of um, speakers on the market where you'll get you know, a fair amount of detail in the mids and the highs, but the low end really suffers. I, I can hear everything happening on the low end on these guys. In fact, when I first pick these up and start listening to some mixes I've been doing on other speakers, I realized there was all this stuff going on uh, sort of from 100 hertz down that I hadn't really been able to pay attention to before. So absolutely love those. Um, of course, listening to listening in a room is dependent on the room to a degree. So the other thing that I have for my mixing, which I cannot sing the praises of highly enough, are uh, my uh, HD uh, 800s here, which are just incredible headphones and um, you know there are some people who have mixed feelings about mixing on headphones uh, generally um, and about how you should always listen to them I try and do both um, but if there's some particularly if it's about very specific sonic detail frequency detail that kind of thing what I'll do is mute the speakers on there and pop the headphones on and now I can hear everything that I need to hear and it's absolutely I mean, it's just ridiculous to me how good those headphones are. Um, so by A being bef between those two, and the, the other thing in my arsenal, of course, is my five pound Bluetooth speaker over there. It's very important sometimes to have a listen on that. What I've got up right here, I've recently mixed Johnny Lloyd's uh, new solo album, um, uh, which I think sounds all right. Um, this is, uh, oh, let's, let's turn it on, shall we? Um, this is, uh... so it's sounding pretty good in case three times you can really feel that bottom end there. I've got a spectrum analyzer here, which I love as well, where you can really see where things are fitting in. Again, you shouldn't only mix visually, but I find it quite useful sometimes to be able to have a look at what's going on in here. And then, uh, some 
space for the vocals there. Nice. But of course, as I say, if there's something I'm unsure about on the detail, headphones on. Sounds pretty good, or at least that's the theory. The last part of my mixing process, just uh, to talk about the end of it, is that I will run stems out of that through my Aurum T-Series analog desk over here, which I'm in deeply in love with. Um, it's a brilliant uh, hand-built bespoke analog mixing desk, eight channels. Uh, so I run out four stems through there, um, four buses I should say, uh, which then come into my Tegla Creme, which is a master bus compression and EQ, and then I route that back in. And then down here we have the analog print after all of that, so uh, I can AB, that's before. And that's after. And there's just a little bit more kind of care on the overall shaping of the sound. And that's the finished mix right there before mastering. So, um, so yeah, and it's, it's, as I say, it's a work in progress. There are things I will add, there are things I will take away, um, and uh, it, it will never end, and my wife will never uh, be free of me talking about audio equipment. You know how these things go. But this is No Mosey Studios Draft 1, and I'm very happy with it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos just like this.